I received a call from the President, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, at approximately 5 a.m., instructing me to meet him at his residence. The double model referred to the system involving payment and rewards. para di kayo nauli sa balita. Narito ang latest Congress hearing ng extrajudicial killing and war on drugs. On September 12, 2024 and September 27, 2024, I was invited to serve as a resource speaker during the recent legislative inquiry conducted by the Joint Committee on Dangerous Drug Public Order and Safety, Human Rights and Public Accounts of the Honorable House of Representatives regarding the investigation into the war on drugs of the previous administration. During these hearings, I was asked several questions concerning my knowledge or involvement in the deaths of three Chinese inmates of the Davao Penal Colony and the death of General Wesley Barayuga, all focusing on the alleged extrajudicial killings of the aforementioned individuals. I was also questioned about my relationship with the former president, as well as my career as a police officer and my tenure as the general manager of the Philippine Charity Ship Stakes Office. Throughout the hearings, I answered questions from the committee based on my personal knowledge. However, I did so with great apprehension as I recognized that my statements on national television could significantly endanger my life, the safety of my family. <laughs> and other very close to me. After considerable reflection, I am now executing this affidavit to provide a comprehensive information to the Quadcom regarding everything I personally know about the war on drugs during the former administration. On, on May, 2026, I received a call from the President, Rodrigo Roa Duterte, at approximately 5 a.m., instructing me to meet him at his residence in Tonya Luisa, Napo City. I was already acquainted with them with the mayor having served as the station commander in one of the police stations in Davao City during his tenure. During our meeting, he requested that I will locate a PNP officer or operative who is a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, indicating that he needed someone capable of implementing the war on drugs on a national level replicating the double model. <laughs> the double model referred to the system involving payment and rewards. <laughs> the double model involves three levels of payment of rewards. <laughs> First is the reward if the suspect is killed. Second, if is the funding of planned operations. And the third is the refund of operational expenses. Uh, Colonel Garma, can you speak louder? Uh, I, I'm sorry, speak closer to the microphone. Initially, I informed the president that I was unaware of any individual with those qualifications as I had not been assigned outside of Davos City or had served in the national capacity within the PNP. However, I recalled my upperclassman Edilberto Leonardo, who was heading the Criminal Investigation Detection Group and was also a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. 
I mentioned his name to the president. On the same day, a certain individual named Mooking contacted me to request for the phone number of Leonardo's contact details, which I promptly provided. A week later, I learned from Arthur Narsolis via phone call that Sir Leonardo had been summoned and was instructed to proceed to the Royal Manday Hotel in Davao for a meeting. <laughs> Leonardo informed me later that he stayed at the hotel for almost three days, during which the president directed him to organize, according to Sir Leonardo, a task force which he understood as PA of TF. When Leonardo relayed this information, urged me to join the task force, I declined first, citing my lack of experience in handling said operations. Leonardo subsequently informed me that he had prepared a proposal routed to Bongo, outlining the task force, which would and compasses to Zon Visayas and Mintena. I am afraid of my life, Mr. Chair, and the life of my relatives and my friends and classmates. Leonardo subsequently informed me that they had prepared a proposal wrote it to Bongo confirming the task force operation which would encompass Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. He also inquired if he and his classmates could have a courtesy call with the president through Bongo for a photo opportunity. Considering this, I thought it prudent to invite also my classmates to join the courtesy call. So in the presence of Colonel Bacay, Vilela, Grijaldo, Tuzon, and Duenas, the member of class 97 and 96 were accommodated in separate rooms at the DPWH office in Panacan, Davao City. The president did not enter our room and I was unaware if he visited the room of class 96. After the courtesy call, Leonardo informed me that the structure of the mentioned task force would undergo changes. In June of 2016, Leonardo has transferred from Manila to assume the position of the chief of the CIDG Region 11. During the initial three months of the assignment, I facilitated all meetings between Leonardo and Bongo at Leonardo's request. Subsequently, they established direct communication. <laughs> Leonardo informed me that he had recalled several trusted personnel, namely Lester, Romel Bactat, Rodel Serbo, Palma, Peter Parungo to serve as operative for the task force, notably Bactat. Serbo and Palma were, for now, discharged from the police service.
Romel Bactat, Sir Bo Palma were all former police officers stationed at the CIDG 11 office. They were discharged from the service on or about a year ago due to an operation that led to the killing of one individual. Lester Bergano is, is a provide citizen, while Peter Parunga was a former detainee of CIDG due to a charge of rape that has been cleared. Romel Bactat, Cerebro Palma, and Parunga were charged with the task of collecting and verifying information provided by police officers in the field concerning arrests, deaths of individuals named in the list of drug personalities, and creating summary reports. All of these reports would then be encoded and compiled by Lester Bergano. The compilation is thereafter elevated to Sir Leonardo, who will decide what level the arrest or killing was and its corresponding reward. Rewards were only given for killings, while for arrest only for the funding of Copland and refund for operational expenses was given. I saw how these individuals operated when I would visit my friend in CIDG 11. He conveyed that the task force would be structured differently and that he submitted a document to Bongo detailing the task force operation including an overview of the current drug landscape in the Philippines. I was informed that the drug structure originated from Bucor, where the Morris drug lords are currently incarcerated, and that it has three branches, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, with Peter Lim involved in the Visayas region. Once the task force became operational, I later le learned that all Copland's funds, refunds for operational expenses, and rewards for agents were processed through the account of Peter Parungo. Currently, Lester Bergano maintained a comprehensive list of the drug personalities of the Philippines. Leonardo conducted briefings for all PDEA, IG regional directors, and PNP chiefs regarding the drug situation. Additionally, if any individual died during police operations, Leonardo will report the incidents to Bongo for inclusion in the weekly report and request for refunds of operational expenses. Leonardo had final authority to determine who would be included in the list of drug personalities and to classify their threat level as well as the discretion to remove individuals from the list. Furthermore, in 2016, while I was at the CIDG office following up the appointments of my personnel, I overheard Padilla discussing drug activities at the Davao Penal Connolly with Leonardo. Padilla specifically identified certain Bucor officers involved in drug trade, notably mentioning an officer named Ginto who was subsequently killed along with other Bucor members. These are the critical facts I personally know regarding the drug war of the previous administration. I am prepared to provide additional details and information in a supplemental affidavit or during an executive session at the discretion of the committee. I affirm the truthfulness and accuracy of the above statements to assist in the investigation by the Joint Committee, Your Honours. Mr. Chairman. Uh, go ahead, uh, SDS. Mr. Chairman, uh, alam mo, papasalamat ako kay Ma'am Garma and no, uh, alam po natin ang nararamdaman mo pero kaya ako makyat, nanonood po ako sa TV, sa baba. Mukhang, uh, Itong committee na to eh, parang uh, pinilit ka para magsalita. Kaya ka umiyak. 
Eh, baka sabihin eh, uh, ang quad kong pinilit ka para magsumiti ng affidavit at basahin mo. Umiyak ka. So, gusto po namin kasi na pakita mo talaga na kusang loob ang sasabihin mo dito sa quad kong. Wala pong sapilitan at uh, galing po sa puso nyo ang pagsasalita. So, kaya po ako uh, umakyat na sa baba ako, kausap ko yung mga ibang kasama natin. Uh, Ma'am Garma, uh, alam ko naman po yung sitwasyon nyo. May nanonood po sa atin buong Pilipinas, lalo na sa Mindanao. Alam ko po kung ano nararamdaman nyo. Pero pakita nyo naman po, in the interest of fairness of every Pilipino, pakita po natin yung fairness dito. Kung uh, titignan nyo po yung mukha nyo sa TV, uh, ang analysis, analisa po namin, parang uh, itong committee na to, which is ako na bigla may affidavit kayo. Kaya ako po sana kung pwede, kasi hindi po naiintindihan yung mga binabasa nyo, yung mga nanonood. Yung affidavit nyo, hindi po naiintindihan yung mga televiewers natin. Kung kayo nandito, naiintindihan nyo, pero pag nasa TV kayo, hindi nyo po naiintindihan yung mga sinasabi nyo. Mr. Chair, on that note, kung pwede po, uh, kung pwede po, uh, magpahingat siya, huwag siya kumiyak, sabihin niya lahat in a clear reading, in a clear words. Ako po, I move sana para basahin niya ulit yung kanyang affidavit, Mr. Chairman. Salamat po. Uh, siguro, um, uh, Um, Miss uh, Roina Garma, we will uh, give you time to uh, to be composed, and uh, we cannot blame you doon sa inyong emotion. Ako rin, nabigla din ako doon sa, <laughs> sa, kasi it's a sudden turn around, no? Uh, from the last mga hearings po natin, and uh, suddenly uh, we will be receiving an affidavit like this, no? Uh, siguro, malapat lang pong sabihin natin sa committing to kung uh, somebody forces you. Uh, to execute an affidavit like this that uh, a while ago uh, the reason why uh, uh, we are, we're asking uh, Congressman Manuel to uh, to hold uh, his gun kasi nga I was able to see the affidavits and uh, I really wanted to um, to uh, read muna for a while and uh, four pages lang naman po yun so nakakagulat din po yung nilalaman ng inyong affidavit dahil a complete turnaround so Meron po bang pumilit sa inyo para i-execute itong apidabit na ito? Wala po, Mr. Chair. Um, it took me one week to make some reflections po. And what And, pushes uh, you uh, to, ano, to yeah, uh, execute? I, I, yeah, I realize the, the truth will always set us free, Mr. Chair. And uh, at least I will be able to contribute if we really want to make to make this country a better place to live and for our children. I think we have to do something para maibalik po yung trust sa PNP, magkaroon po ng reform sa PNP, and uh, yung tiwala po ng mga tao, whether victims of criminals sa gobyerno. Kanina po may sinasabi kayo na natatakot kayo sa buhay niyo at sa pamilya niyo. Uh, Saan po kayo natatakot? Of course po, it's normal, Mr. Chair, when you speak the truth, you cannot please everyone. And it's normal to anybody to have that mixed emotion. But still, it took me one week to make reflections. And uh, I realized I need to do my part po. <laughs> Dahil po ba sa relasyon niyo sa nakaraang... Uh, administrasyon kay former president. Um, Kaya po, ang damdamin niyo po ay uh, mixed emotion. Normal lang naman bilang tao po, Mr. Chair. Pero, what prevailed after a week of reflection is I always say, the truth will always set me free. We are I want a better place. A better PNP, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ma'am Garma, we are all on the same page. Kaya ginagawa po natin to para sa taong bayan, maayos yung PNP, 
mawala ang extrajudicial killing, yung drugs. Kaya nandito po tayo. Yung sinasabi niyo po, we are totally agree on that. Kaya gusto ko lang pong i-clear at sinagot niyo na na walang pumilit, nag-meditate ka for how many days before you prepare that affidavit na bigla nga ako ngayong quad kong hearing na meron po kayong affidavit. So on that note, Ma'am Garma, pag-compose na po kayo, ayos na po kayo, pwede niyo po ulit basahin ang inyong affidavit. Salamat po, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay. Uh, SDS, uh, are we going to uh, ask uh, Ms. Garma to uh, to read again? Please, Mr. Chairman. Yung kanyang apidabit, no? Uh, uh, we hope, uh, kasi kanina medyo <laughs> hindi ko rin po naiintindihan, no? Luckily, I was able to read na yung ating pong apidabit. So, uh, siguro kung compose na po kayo uh, para po maintindihan. Kasi napaka-importante po nito, no? Nung binabasa ko din po, medyo na-shock din po ako. So, Basically, siguro, we will give you another chance uh, para po uh, mabasa itong uh, apidabit as requested and uh, uh, move by uh, SDS uh, Don Gonzalez. So, now, uh, you have the uh, floor again, uh, Ma'am Rohina Garma. On September 12, 2024 and September 27, 2024, I was invited to serve as a resource person during the recent legislative inquiry conducted by the Joint Committee on Drugs. Mom, can you put the uh, mic a little bit uh, closer to your mouth, please? Uh, yes, during these hearings, I was asked several questions concerning my knowledge or involvement in the deaths of three Chinese inmates at the double penal colony and the death of General Wesley Barayuga, all focusing on the alleged extrajudicial killings of the aforementioned individuals. I was also questioned about my relationship with the former pre president as well as my career as a police officer and my tenure as a GM of the Philippine Charity Ship Stakes Office. Throughout the hearings, I answered questions from the committee based on my personal knowledge. However, I did so with great apprehension as I recognized that my statements on national television could significantly endanger my life, the safety of my family, and other close to me. After considerable reflection, I am now executing this affidavit to provide a comprehensive information to the Quadcom regarding everything I personally know about the war on drugs during the war former admin. On May, 16, May of 2016, I received a call from the pre then President Rodrigo Duterte at approximately 5 in the morning, instructing me to meet him at his residence in Doña Luisa, Davao City. I was already acquainted with then Mayor Duterte, having served as a station commander in one of the police stations in Davao during his tenure. During our meeting, he requested that, an, that I locate a PNP officer or operative who is a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, indicating that he needed someone capable of implementing the war on drugs on a national scale, replicating the Davao model. The Davao model referred to the shifting system involving payment and rewards. The Davao model involves three levels of payments of rewards. The first is the reward if the suspect is killed. Second is the funding of planned operations. Third is the refund of operational expenses. Initially, I informed the president that I was unaware of any individual with those qualifications as I had not been assigned outside of Davao, nor had I served in a national capacity with the PNP. However, I recalled my upperclassman, Edilberto Leonardo, who was handling the criminal investigation detection group and was also a member of the Iglesia Ni Cristo. 
I mentioned him, his name to the president. On the same day, a certain individual named Mooking contacted me by the phone to request Leonardo's contact details, which I promptly provided. A week later, I learned from Arthur Narsolis via phone call that Leonardo had been summoned and was instructed to proceed to Royal Mandaya Hotel for a meeting. Leonardo informed me that he stayed at the hotel for three days, during which the president directed him to organize a task force similar to PAOC TF. When Leonardo relayed this information and urged me to join the task force, I declined citing my lack of experience in handling such operations. Leonardo subsequently informed me that he had prepared a proposal routed through Bongo outlining the task force operations which would encompass Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. He also inquired if he and his classmates could have a courtesy call with the president through Bongo for a photo opportunity. Considering this, I thought it would be prudent also to invite my classmates, Bakay, Vilela, Grijaldo, Tuzon, and Duenas, to join the courtesy call. The members of Class 97 and Class 96 of PNPA were accommodated in a separate room at the TPWH office in Panacan, Davao. The president did not enter our room, and I was unaware if he visited the room of class 96. This is 96, sir, not 97. After the call to see call, Leonardo informed me that the structure of the intended task force would undergo changes. In June of 2016, Leonardo was transferred from Manila to assume the position of the chief of the CIDG in Region 11. During the initial three months of this assignment, I facilitated all meetings between Leonardo and Bongo at Leonardo's request. Subsequently, they established direct communications. Leonardo informed me that he had recalled several trusted personnel, namely, I met Lester Bergano, Romel Bactat, Rodel Serbo, Michael Palma, and Peter Parungo to serve as operatives for the task force. Notably, Romel Bactat, Rodel Serbo, and Michael Palma were all discharged as police officers. Romel Bactat and Romel Serbo, Michael Palma, Palma were all former police officers, stations at CITG 11 office. They were discharged from service on or about a year ago due to an operation that led to the killing of one individual. Lester Bergano is a private citizen, while Peter Parungo was a former detainee in CITG due to a charge of rape that has been cleared. Romel Bactat Rodel Serbo, Michael Palma, and Peter Parungo were charged with the task force of collecting, verifying informations provided by police officers in the field concerning arrests or deaths of individuals named in the list of drug personalities and creating a summary report. All of these reports would then be encoded, compiled, by Lester Bergano. The compilation is thereafter elevated to Leonardo, who will then decide what level the arrest or killing was and its corresponding reward. Rewards were only given for killings, while for arrest, only the funding of the Copland and a refund for the expenses was given. I saw how this individual operated when I would visit the CIDG office in Region 11 to see my friend Lot Lot. He also conveyed to me that the task force would be structured differently in that he submitted a document to Bongo detailing the task force operation 
including an overview of the drug current drug landscape in the Philippines. I was also informed that the drug structure originated from Bucor, where numerous drug lords are currently incarcerated, and that it has three branches, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, with Peter Lim involved in the Visayas region. Once the task force became operational, I later learned, learned that all Copland, Copland funds, refunds for operational expenses and rewards against for agents were processed through the bank accounts of Peter Parungo at Metro Bank, BDO, and PS Bank. Concurrently, Lester Bergaño maintained a comprehensive list of the drug personalities in the Philippines. Leonardo conducted briefings for Orpidea, IG, regional directors, and PNP chiefs regarding the operations. Additionally, if any individual died during police operation, Leonardo would report the incident to Bongo for inclusion in his weekly report and request for refunds of operational expenses. Leonardo had the final authority to determine who would be included on the list of drug personalities and to classify their threat levels, as well as the discretion to remove individuals from the list. Furthermore, in 2016, while I was at the CIDG office, following up on personal appointments, I overheard Superintendent Patiria, Padilla of Bucor discussing drug activities at the Davao Penal Colony with Leonardo. Padilla specifically mentioned certain Bucor officers involved in the drug trade, notably mentioning an officer named Ginto, who was subsequently killed along with other Bucor members. These are the critical facts I personally know regarding the drug war of the previous administration. I am prepared to provide additional details and information in the supplemental affidavit or during an executive session at the discretion of the committee. I affirm the truthfulness and accuracy of the above statement to assist in the investigation by the Joint Committee on Dangerous Drugs, Public Order and Safety, Human Rights, and Public Accounts of the Honorable House of Representatives, the Quadcom, Mr. Chair.